Hello, my name is Robert Smith and I'm with New River Community College's Academic Assistance and today we're looking at the building up principle. And this is a way of writing uh, electron configurations. So we're asked to write the ground state electron configuration for both chlorine and silver. And I'm going to show you both ways of writing it, both the explicit way and the noble gas way. You'll find that the noble gas way is faster, so generally speaking, you'll want to try to do that way, but sometimes you are asked to write in an explicit manner, in which case you'll need to know how to do that. So <clears throat> there are there is one chart that I would highly recommend you memorizing, and if you need to, you can write it out on the back of an exam to help you out during the exam if you're allowed to do so, or if you get a note card or whatever method the professor allows for you to do, you can use that to do this out. But I would highly recommend it, at least until you become familiar with the way in which uh, the electron configuration works. So the way it, this chart that I'm going to make, you simply list out the rows or periods, there are seven, and then on each one you're going to put, you start row one, period one has S, then two has SP, three has SPD, four has SPDF, and all the rest are going to have SPDF because we don't have anything larger than F thus far. Okay, and then once you've written that out, you're simply going to diagonalize everything. So you're just going to make a little diagonal line. And this tells you the order in which things occur. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, why is it that I have to do this? It's pretty obvious. It goes from 1S to 2S to 2P to 3S to 3P to 3D. No, it doesn't do it that way. It's important to recognize that you diagonalize it. The only time, it only works in a direct way until you get to uh, 3D. 3D is in a different spot. It's in the, not in the period of 3, but rather in the period of 4. Over here you can see have a electron configuration table. It's kind of uh, a variant on the periodic table. And you'll see your S's, your S over here, and it comes all the way over here and grabs helium. And you have your P group over here, and your D. and your F, and that kind of breaks it up nice and easy for you. Now, look, going back to our diagonalization chart here, you'll know that it starts with 1S, then 2S, then 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S, 3D, 4P, 5S. Okay, so coming back over here, <coughs> you can see that the one, two, three, the, for the S's, they correspond with the period. And the same is true with the P. But the D is one minus the period, or period minus one, and the F is the period minus two. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? Well, if you look, instead of from here, from here to here, you start with three S and then you move into three P. Over here, you're going from 4S to 3D back to 4P, 5S to 4D to 5P, 6S to 4F to 5D to 6P. So if you were to just follow this directly, you would not get the proper electron configuration, and that's very important. A lot of people will lose the points simply because they don't follow <clears throat> the proper electron configuration. They'll call the level the 3D, they'll call it 4D instead of 3D. So coming back to our actual problem, let's go ahead and 
write this out. I'm going to start with chlorine. And like I said, edit. I'm going to start with chlorine. And like I said before, we're going to do this both ways. There's an explicit way, and then there's the abbreviated noble gas way. So written out explicitly, we see that chlorine, if we were to move this up, <coughs> edit. You'll see that chlorine is right here. So I need to get to the three P's. Using my diagonalization chart, I can see that we start with 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and then 3p5. That's chlorine. Coming back to the chart, let's confirm that. So we have, going through here, we have 1s, and we have two of them. We have two 2s's, two we have six 2p's, we have two 3s's, and we have five 3p's. So that's confirmed. Please note that this is the ground state electron configuration. They could just as easily have asked for the ionic electron configuration, in which case recognize that chlorine has a minus one charge, which makes it look like argon. So your 3p would have a 6 on it instead of a 5 in an ionic electron configuration. Speaking of noble gases, let's do the abbreviated noble gas version. All you do is start with the nearest noble gas that is less than the number of electrons of your target atom. So we're going to start with neon. Putting it in brackets like this indicates that it encompasses all the electron configuration that encompasses neon. So from neon, we just have to do 3s2, 3p5, and we're done. That's chlorine. Two different ways of writing it. One is slightly shorter than the other. And so you might be saying, well, there's a benefit to neon, but it's not really benefit to the noble gas configuration but it's not really that beneficial. Well, you, that may be true in the case of chlorine, but not so much with the case of silver. So let's look at silver. Silver is all the way down here. So we're looking at, if we use our diagonalization chart, we're going to be, or we can use our electron configuration table, we're going to have a 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, and then 4d9. So let's go ahead and write that out explicitly. Use blue for silver. So we got 1s2, 2s2. 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, and 4d9. Now, this is the standard electron configuration. Silver is a funny element. Silver, gold, copper, they're all kind of strange. This would be correct. We're doing this very explicitly and very simplistically, um, not to confuse you or anything like that, but generally speaking, copper, gold, and silver, as well as chromium and a few others, don't like to have that 9 in their d orbital. They'd rather have 10 and one less in the s orbital. So theoretically, 
you could have it this way, or you can just as easily have made it so that it was 5s1, 4d10. For our purposes, let's stick with the 49 just to keep it simple. But bear in mind that there are a couple of elements out there that don't like to be not quite full or have some desire to be more full in one orbital than the other. Using the abbreviated version, you'll find that this one is a lot faster with the abbreviated version. So we're starting off with Krypton, KR. And then all we have to do is 5s2, 4d9. Look at that. So much simpler than doing the explicit version. Again, if you look it up in a textbook, it's probably going to have 5s1, 4d10. Because silver is an oddball element and likes to have a full d orbital and prefers it over the uh, s orbital. And again, if you needed to write it out the ionic version, you'd have to look and see what kind of ion you're working with with silver, because it is a transition metal, to be multiple types, and you know adjust accordingly based on that. And that's how you write out the uh, electron configuration for various elements. You will not generally have this gigantic chart on an exam, which is why the diagonalization chart is really beneficial. Because I could go through and say, okay, they're going through silver. I've got my 1s2, my 2s2, my 2p6, 3s2, uh, 3p6, 4s2, 3d9, 4p6, 5s2, 4d9. And then that was it. Or likewise, you can do the S, uh, 5s1 or 4d10. Again, that doesn't happen with many elements. There's just a handful. I know that uh, silver, gold, and copper are like that. And I know that chromium <coughs> is like that. But generally speaking, unless otherwise indicated, or unless your professor explicitly mentions those elements in a very deliberate manner, I would not worry about whether cobalt or um, thorium or any of these other elements are wanting to have a different configuration than what would be indicated by the diagonalization chart. 